this lesson, we are going to be looking at a example of a writing prompt for grades six to eight that says, defend your position or stance using original ideas with supporting details. This is another way of saying persuasive writing. And what we are going to have at the end of this lesson is a piece of writing that looks like this. You can see there are five paragraphs. And it will come from this four square here. So you can see that we will have our red, green, purple, orange, and black paragraphs. This is the introduction, which is red. The main idea is red, green, purple, orange, and black. But before we get there, we are going to be looking at what this says here. And this is hard to read because of the copy. So I have it on a new paper. So everything that is here, I have put here. So we will read over this together, okay? So before we do that, we're going to review a few words. This lesson is about doing something called persuasive writing. When we are doing this kind of writing, we need to decide what our opinion is about something. This is what do we think. Other people do not need to agree with us. In fact, they might disagree with us, which means not agree with us. When we are doing persuasive writing, we are going to argue our opinion. We are going to present an argument as to why our opinion is a good one. And our goal is to persuade the reader to change their mind. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to look at our opinion and then we are going to support our opinion with evidence. And what is evidence? If our opinion is the main idea, then evidence are the details. The details are going to be our reasons. What is a reason? It answers the question, why do we have this opinion? So for our opinion, we will have three reasons. That will explain our opinion our reasons will explain our opinion so that the reader will understand why we have the opinion that we do. But to argue our opinion, to give an argument about our opinion, because we want to persuade the reader to agree with us, will come when for each of our three reasons, we provide examples or facts. So we will support our opinion using facts that would be difficult for the reader to disagree with. So we use facts to back up our opinion. And that makes a good argument, which is good at persuading the reader to change their mind and agree with us. So now we're going to look at what it says on here. It starts by saying, too much television, that is the title, and the directions say, here are some letters to the editor of a newspaper about children and television. They want us in the directions, when you see directions, look for the verbs. The verbs are read and write. They want us to do two things. First, read, read the letters, and then 
The second thing is write. Write your own letter on the next page to the editor of a newspaper. So the audience, the person that we are going to be writing to, the person who will be reading what we write is the editor of the newspaper. So we would start our letter with, Dear Editor. Okay, so let's read the first letter. This letter was written by a student against television. You're going to see these words for and against. Against means he thinks television is a bad idea. That is his opinion. For means he thinks television is a good idea for children. So letter from a student against television to the editor. I don't like watching TV. It is too passive. Passive is the opposite of active. So you are not getting any exercise. You are not doing anything. You are just sitting there. I think children should be outside playing and doing creative things instead of inside watching mindless television. This means you are not using your mind. You are not thinking. Television programs. This is a show. Many children in the United States are overweight. That means they're, they're like fat and watch too much television. Television is damaging or hurting our health. Let's get moving. Sincerely, and then it's from the student. So this student gave an opinion about why television is not good for kids. And she gave some reasons. One reason is because you're not getting exercise. Another one is you're not thinking. And because you're not getting exercise, you're gaining weight. So she does not think it is healthy for your body or your mind. Okay, this one is from a student for television to the editor. I think watching television can benefit children. Benefit means be helpful, it's good for. For example, there are various educational programs this would be TV shows on TV that are educational. That means you can learn something from them. They can teach you something. Education is the word that means school. So we can learn something. That teach us about nature. These programs often introduce us to unusual animals and unique habitats. Okay, so that would be learning about science outdoors in nature animals and where they live. Through television, we can be transported to a new world and learn about new places. Okay, so this person is saying television is like school. We can learn new things. Sincerely, and then our student. With both of these students, they are just giving us their opinion. They are not trying to change our mind. They are not trying to be persuasive. They are just explaining what their opinion is. Okay, so they're giving us an explanation of their opinion. But they are not trying to change our mind or persuade us to have the same opinion as them. They gave their reasons, but not too many examples. Okay, there's one more letter. This is from a parent. This letter says to the editor, depending on how television is controlled, I think it can hurt or help children. If parents are involved in limiting how much and what kind of television children watch, then children can benefit from educational programs. However, if children are allowed to watch anything they want, then they will be exposed to too much violence and inappropriate programs. Sincerely, and then the parent. 
You can use this to copy when you start and finish your letter. This tells you how to start it, and then you would say sincerely, comma, and then your name, comma, student. And you see there's a capital S here and a comma, and you can copy the spelling just like that. Um, so this parent is saying, well, it can hurt or it can help. It depends. It depends. It depends on what the parents do, the choices that the parents make. Are they paying attention? Are they making decisions about what shows their kids can watch and what shows they can't watch and how much TV they can watch? And, and so those decisions make a difference on whether it will hurt or help. Okay, so those are, and this again is the parent's opinion, okay? So now comes part two, which is write. It's your turn to write. So we're looking for keywords, and our keywords, I put them here in big capital letters so you can see them. These are important parts of the directions that we need to make sure that we follow. So it says, here's that word explain, explain your opinion on children and television. Use specific details to support your opinion. This would be reasons and then examples that um, help explain your reasoning. Remember to address your letter to the editor. So you need to start with to the editor and sign your name at the end. Sign your name at the end means that you're saying sincerely, comma, and then your name, comma, student. The letter should be no longer than two paragraphs. Remember to write only one letter to the editor, your own letter. So you may not copy someone else's letter. Okay, now I am going to show how to write a persuasive essay on this topic about television and children. What I'm going to show you will not um, follow these directions because this says no longer than two paragraphs. I'm going to show you how to do a persuasive essay that uses five paragraphs and then when I am done I will tell you how you can um, do it differently so that you are following these directions specifically. Okay, so I'm going to start with my four square. And I have already um, drawn my line down and my line across and made my box in the middle and erased it. I know that I'm doing this first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I've put in my um, transition words. Remember, these are the transition words that we use. So I'm going to go ahead and write to begin with. I, I always start with to begin with. Sometimes I will change what I use here and here, but to get us started, I will put in addition comma, comma, and then also. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with saying, and I'm gonna go ahead and make my boxes here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start by saying, in my opinion, because that's what this is. This is my opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but I hope that by the time you are done reading what my opinion is and the evidence I use to support my opinion, I hope that you will agree with me. I hope that I can persuade you 
to change your mind and agree with me. So I'm going to make my subject a gerund phrase of watching TV. So you can see the ing is the gerund form of watch. And we use this verb watch when we are watching TV. So when we have the object TV, we say watch, watching TV. We do not say looking at TV. We say watching TV. Watching TV is, remember when we use a gerund phrase, we use the singular verb. So I do not say watching TV are. It is watching TV is. And then I'm going to put my adjective here. My adjective, I don't know if you remember that word, benefit that one of the letters used. Let's see which one. I think it was the girl that was for it. Yeah, she did. She said, can benefit children. And actually the parent also said, can benefit. Benefit means to help or to be good for. So I can turn this word benefit, which is a verb, into an adjective by getting rid of the T and making it beneficial. It's a tricky suffix, beneficial. That means good for. For children. If it is done wisely. So I am making my opinion kind of a combination of, I listened to the arguments made by the people in these letters when they talked about their opinion. And so I, I'm going to pay attention to what this person said because he's the one I need to persuade, right? I need to get him to change his mind because he is against television. So I need to think about what his argument is and make sure that I come up with a solution for his problems, for the problems he has with television. I want to have an answer or a solution. So I am going to say I'm for television, but I was also thinking about what the parent said, and she made a good point, or he made a good point, that it does depend on what choices we make. Not everything on television is good, and we have this great expression in English. It's called everything in moderation. I say that a lot. It means that almost everything can be useful if we are careful with how much we use it or even with food. A lot of food is okay as long as we are careful about how much of it we eat. Anything that we do too much or eat too much can end up going from being helpful to maybe not so helpful. So this is a, a little phrase I say a lot. Same thing with TV. TV can be good if it is used in moderation, if we don't sit in front of it 24 hours a day. <clears throat> okay, so want to take a quick look at my complex sentence here. Did you see it? If is a purple word, a conjunction that we use to make a complex sentence, which means before it and after it, we should have a clause. Well, here is the subject, and here is the verb that goes with it. So there's my red and green in this clause. Watching TV is what? Beneficial for children. So that's my first clause. That's my independent clause. That's the main sentence. But then, after here, this pronoun it, that's my subject. And what is it talking about? Anytime we use a pronoun, we need to know, okay, well, what is it or who is it? 
Well, that it is this, watching TV. So if watching TV is done wisely. So here is my verb. <clears throat> so this is my dependent clause. And because the independent clause comes first and the dependent clause comes last, I do not need a comma here. So my sentence is, in my opinion, watching TV is beneficial for children if it is done wisely. Okay, we don't need to add extra words. All right, so <clears throat> I need to think about how I want to organize my paper. There is no right and wrong way to do this, but I want to think about what do I want to say to make my argument. And I want to split that into three sections. So I think what I'm going to do, because I'm not just saying watching TV is beneficial for children, period. If that's all I wanted to do, I could just give three reasons. You know, it's beneficial because you can learn about this, you can learn about this, you can learn about this. But I add, there's two parts, right? I say, if it is done wisely. Well, this word if means it depends. That means sometimes yes, sometimes no. Maybe yes, maybe no. So I need to kind of explain that. So I think what I'm going to do for my first part is I'm going to say, well, if you use it wisely, there are these benefits. These good things could happen. This is if it is used wisely. Now this is not a complete sentence. I am only writing down some words that are some notes to help me remember what I'm thinking about so that later I can put it into a sentence. And the big benefit here is going to be things that we can learn. And I will be talking about three different things we can learn. Over here, I think I'm going to talk about the opposite of benefits would be problems that it could cause. Okay, so I, I'm thinking about what the student wrote who was against television. And he, he made, he or she made some good points. Well, this would be, in my opinion, if it is not used wisely. <clears throat> wisely means making a good choice, being smart about what choices we make. Wise is thinking about when we make a choice, when we decide, do I want to do this or do I want to do this? We do some extra thinking about that. And we think, hmm, if I do this, what will happen? What will happen next? We think about cause and effect. If I do this, what will it cause to happen next? What would the effect be? Or if I do this, what would happen next? What would this cause to happen next? What would the effect be of doing this? So we stop and we think, okay, I can choose to do this now or choose to do this now, but what would happen next because of this choice? And thinking about that is being wise. All right, so... I'm going to list three problems that I noticed in that person's letter because if I can find a solution to each of those problems, then I am canceling his argument. I am making his argument no longer a good one. It's showing that my argument is better. So down here, I'm going to have my solution. Okay, this is my answer to those problems. And my solution is make good choices. This is this part of my opinion. If it is done wisely, doing it wisely is making good choices. And if you make good choices, then these will not be problems. And instead, you will have these benefits. 
So I will have a solution for each one of these three problems. All right, I'm going to start with the benefits that I see. I wanna start out by saying how great um, these benefits are. So, one thing we could learn if we watch TV is we could learn about nature. I found that out in one of the letters. Nature means things that live outside. That's plants and animals. And I'm going to mention animals specifically. Something else we can learn about are places and people all around the world. Another way to say that would be culture. When we learn about people who live around the world in different places and how they dress, what they eat, what they do, their holidays, we are learning about their culture. It's learning about people who are different from us. We can also learn about character. Now, I have used the word character to talk about who is in a story. We also use the word character when we talk about what kind of person is that person in a story. It could be a fictional person who's in a pretend story, not someone who is real, or it could be a real person that we're learning about from a different part of the world. But whether it's a pretend person or a real person, we can talk about what kind of character do they have. Are they kind and helpful, thoughtful? Are they persevering and determined to keep trying and not give up? Are they resourceful and inventive? Um, I think about the video on the character words. When we look at what a person does and what they say and the decisions they make, okay, what they do, that gives us evidence, there's that word, evidence, of what kind of person they are. So when we're looking at a story on TV, it could be fiction or nonfiction, we can talk about the characters and how they solve problems because they might have a problem they need to solve. We can talk about what choices did they make to solve those problems. We can talk about how they treated other people, how they treated animals, what kind of attitude did they have? What was, was their attitude positive or negative? And then we can learn about that by talking to our family about it, having a discussion with our family. And that can improve the relationships in our family. If we spend time with our uh, parents and our brothers and sisters and have conversation about or discussions a discussion about the characters in the TV show and how they solved problems, how they um, made decisions, how they treated other people, and if we thought they were doing a good job or not a good job, if we came up with words to describe what kind of character they have, the conversation that we are having with our mom and dad and in our family, the discussion we are having can improve our family relationships. It can help us to trust each other more. Okay, I'm gonna erase these extra words here. So even though watching TV is something that we often do without talking, after the show is over, 
if we have conversation with our family and talk about it, then that becomes something that is more social and more um, helpful to the relationships with our family, how we get along with each other, and how we can learn from each other and trust each other. So this can be a good thing. Okay, problems. So this person said, well, you're going to spend too much time watching TV and that means you will get less exercise. And if you get less exercise, you will gain weight, which means get fat. And you also could be less fit. This means your muscles would not be very strong. It's not so good for your heart. Also, if you watch shows that have a lot of violence in them, this is when people are getting hurt or people are hurting each other. That could be a bad influence on you. When kids see a lot of people getting shot or hurt or dying or blood or um, really mean and unkind things happening over and over and over and over again on TV, in video games, then it can cause a problem. We call it desensitizing. It's a very fancy word. Desensitizing. It's desensitizing to violence. What that means is that if we see violence so much, it stops making us feel very badly about it. We just start to think of it as normal, you know, because we see it all the time. And so instead of it being upsetting to us, violence should always be upsetting. It should always make people feel sad or upset. But if we see it all the time on the TV, then it might not bother us anymore. We might start to think, oh, that's normal, no big deal, they will be fine, they're just getting killed. And so this is a, a problem. This would be not a good influence on our mind. And the last thing he mentioned was he said the word mindless. Well, less is a suffix that means without, you don't have it. So something that is mindless means you are not using your mind. That means you are not thinking. Well, one of the things we like to do in school is work on our thinking skills. And we call them critical thinking skills. For example, in these writing lessons, when we are talking about compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem and solution, we are using th critical thinking skills. It's also sometimes called analysis or analytical thinking. When we ask the question, what kind of person is this character? And what is our evidence to support that opinion? We are doing analysis or analytical thinking. We call it critical thinking skills. Those are some fancy words that mean we are really thinking about things and using our brain and wondering about the question why, how. When we just ask the questions who, where, and when, this does not, we don't have to do too much thinking. We can find the answers to those pretty quickly. But when we ask the questions why or how, when they want us to explain something to help someone understand, this takes more critical thinking skills. Okay, so now we know what some of the problems can be with watching TV. And we need to come up with answers for those problems. And we think the answer has to do with making good choices. 
For example, now I probably should answer these in the same order that I listed the problems, but I am going to, um, I'm following, I already thought about this, right? And so I'm following my plan here and I'm gonna just stick with my plan, but this is one place where I could improve it and make it better by changing my order here. So the first thing I'm gonna say is choose. Okay, that means you need to pick. Do I want this one or do I want this one? You can't have both, you have to pick this one or this one. So we will choose, choose good shows. Okay, we want them to have a positive influence. That's the opposite of a bad influence. Okay, so we would be picking shows, for example, that do not have bad language, that do not have violence, that, um, that, that have a positive influence. They, they make us a better person. They make us think, oh, I want to be like that character. Okay, so the next one is also choose good shows. But this one, I have kind of a fancy word here. I'll explain it in a minute. Relatable characters. So here when I say character, I'm talking about the people that are in the show. Relatable means there's something about this character that we can relate to. We can relate to. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know the word relative, well, maybe not. Relative would be your family, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandparents, um, cousins, brothers, sisters. Relatives are people that we are, that are part of our family. Relate to means someone that we can find something in common with. There, there's something about their life or their person that we say, yeah, I totally get that. That's like my life. Or yeah, I have that problem sometimes. Or, oh, I understand them so well because um, I, I, I see this in my life too. So that would be a relatable character. And if we have relatable characters, that makes it a good choice or a good topic for discussion, okay? Because we're looking here, remember what I said here, to improve family relationships. Well, I'm thinking we need to have a, a show that would be really a good topic, topic means main idea, a good topic for the family to talk about. Okay, so I'm gonna say for discussion. Discussion is the fancy word for what are we going to talk about, okay? The conversation that the family has. Okay, so what we talk about. So after we watch a movie or after we watch a TV show, we can talk about it together as a family. Well, what are we going to talk about? In our con and, and it helps us if, if we're gonna talk about what kind of character that, that person was. How did they solve problems? Did they make good choices, bad choices? Do we want to be like that person or do we not want to be like that person? Maybe what would have been a better choice for that person to make? And as we have that conversation or that discussion, it can help us think about how we might make choices in similar situations. And then our character can get better as we learn from the decisions that the character made in that show. And all of this conversation and, and discussion requires critical thinking skills. So now we are thinking. And then the last one that I haven't mentioned yet was 
the problem of less exercise and gaining weight. So here I'm going to say, well, they could make a schedule. They could say, all right, we're, we will watch these four shows every week, and this is the time that they are on. And so every Friday night from 7 to 9, or every Saturday night from 6 to 7, or every Monday evening from 5 to 6, we are going to watch TV. And if they have a schedule and they follow it, then the TV is not just going to get turned on and stay on all the time. And that means they would be watching TV less time. Okay, so less time on TV. And then they have more time to get exercise. So now I have given my reasons for why I think it is beneficial. I have thought about, I, I start making my argument here where I say, okay, these are problems, I get that, but there's solutions to those problems if watching TV is done wisely, if we make good choices. So I decided to break down my persuasive essay into my benefits and then the problems if it's not used wisely because I am not just saying it is beneficial for children, period. I'm saying if it is done wisely. Well, in order to explain this, I need to explain this. So, for my, as you can see, I'm going to say as you can see, now I'm going to connect my main idea watching TV to my details. This one is a little bit, this one is a little bit tricky because I'm not giving, um, like when in the last video when I did um, a new bike would be a great gift for me. And let me show you an example of that. In the last one, I said, a new bike would be a great gift for me because it would help me be healthier, more responsible, and have fun. So I have three separate reasons. Uh, I have another example of a student. There was a third grade student that said a football would be a great gift for me. And his reasons were it would help me be more responsible, it would help me use my imagination, and it would be fun. So to do with with those examples, I am not trying to change uh, I'm not trying to say, oh, what? You think a baseball would be a better gift than a football? I don't agree with you. I'm right. You're wrong. You need to agree with me. Um, I'm With those examples of a great gift, I'm trying to change the mind of... Um, I don't have it right here. Or do I? Let's see where I have it. There's this one. I was writing to mom and dad, and I was trying to say to them, I think a new bike would be a great gift for me, and maybe they had said no. So now I'm trying to change their mind so that they can agree with me and say, yes, we agree with you. A new bike would be a great gift for you. So I was giving three reasons to convince them to make my argument. They, it was not a, um, it was not them saying, we think you should have a, uh, a new book. And I was saying, I think a new bike is better. A bike is better than a book. It wasn't like that. Um, it was, I want a new bike. They don't really want to get one for me. I am going to try to change their mind by telling them here are three really good reasons with evidence, with examples, 
of why a new bike would make me a better person, make me more the way they want me to be. They want me to be healthier, more responsible, and have fun in good ways, then get me a new bike because that will give you everything that you want for me. With this one, we know based on these letters that some people are against television and some people are for television. So there's definitely two sides to this issue, this opinion about is television good for kids or not good for kids. We're only talking about television. We're not saying what's better, watching TV or playing video games. It's not a choose which one is better. It's a, okay, we're talking only about watching TV. Is it good or is it not good? So here I am saying, well, I'm saying it's good, but I'm saying if, okay, if it is done wisely. And so I need to explain this if. So here I'm saying, okay, if it's not done wisely, you can have these problems, but if it is done wisely, then these problems go away. They're not problems anymore. So in order to have these benefits, you have to do this. If you don't do this, then you're going to have this. So what I said for my solution is I kept my same sub my same main idea subject and I said watching TV and then I said has many benefits. And here you can see that my subject is this gerund phrase, the same one I used here. For my verb, I said has. Okay, this is singular, so this is has, not have. We don't say watching TV have, it's has. But we can't just say has and nothing. We need an object after this, right? I wouldn't say I have. Be like, huh, what do you have? You need to say, I have what, watching TV has what, and it has many benefits. Benefits are things that are good for you. But that would be if I put a period here and I'm done. And I'm not. I want to say if. Another way to say if is this. As long as, okay, this phrase right here means if. As long as good choices are made. And I'm not quite done. I'm going to add a prepositional phrase about what and when to watch. About what and when to watch. That's kind of a very complicated phrase, but we might end up, you might have a sentence that is more simple or you might turn this into a few sentences and that's fine. One thing I wanna say is that this here is like a purple conjunction, just like if, okay? So this is a complex sentence. This right here is my purple conjunction. And then this is my subject, good choices. And then, whoops, 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 whoops. It should be red, right? So I use red for my subject. I would say I need coffee. Okay, there we go. And then the verb and then we have a phrase that says about what good choices are made. And then we have to say about what, what kind of choices, what and when to watch. So what talks about the shows, because remember I said, choose good shows, choose good shows. And the when is talking about the schedule, make a schedule. Okay, so what time, how much time, what days? 
So here I say, watching TV has many benefits, which is right here, as long as good choices are made about what and when to watch. I didn't touch on this paragraph because it is implied with this as long as. This means if this is not done, then it will not have many benefits. And the opposite of benefits are problems. So this will happen if this does not happen. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to turn this into my essay. So my thinking is finished, but now I need to turn all of these notes into sentences. This will be sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, sentence four. I do want to say though that this is a little bit of a complicated topic and it might take me more than one sentence to explain each bullet point. So I might have more than four sentences in the paragraph, but I will still go in this order. I will make sure I've explained this first and then I will explain this one and then I will explain this one and so forth. And then I will go to my purple paragraph and then to my orange paragraph. And I might, as I'm writing, decide on a transition word here and here that works a little bit better. I can always change the plan and be flexible Flexible is when we do something different than we had planned on, and that's okay. But this gives me a place to start. And then this in the beginning is my red. Now one thing I'm going to do in this essay is something that I have not done before. In all of the other five paragraph essays we have done, I have left the introduction, the introductory paragraph, Okay, so this has been the introduction. That's the first paragraph where we introduce the topic or the main idea, what our whole paper is about. Introduce is when I say, hi, my name is Miss Camp, nice to meet you. What's your name? This is when we say, hi, I'm about to tell you what my paper is all about. I hope you enjoy reading it. That's our introduction. In this paper, it is going to be more than one sentence. Usually, especially when you get into high school, your introductory paragraph will have a sentence about your main idea, and then we'll have a sentence to introduce this, and then a sentence to introduce this, and then a sentence to introduce this. And then we will cross this out and go to our next paragraph, our second paragraph, and really explain this one well. Say, here's the reason, now we're gonna explain it with these examples that give evidence of this. Okay, so let me get my paper. And the first thing we're going to do is put down our two fingers and make an X. Okay, now I'm going to start by copying my sentence in the middle. Let's see if we can see that. Okay, so I start with, in my opinion, in my opinion, comma, watching TV, is beneficial come back to my margin for children if it is done wisely okay now 
I want to give a quick introduction to how I am organizing my paper. So I'm going to use first, next, and finally to introduce this idea, this idea, and this idea. I am letting the reader know how I am going to organize this paper and what they will look for and find in each of the paragraphs coming up. So here I'm going to say, the transition word I'm going to use is first. And then to show you that I'm um, explaining this paragraph, I am going to switch to green and say, I will prove how helpful prove means provide evidence using facts. Okay, using facts because people cannot disagree with facts. I will prove how helpful because I've already said beneficial. Sorry, I don't know if you can see this. I've already said beneficial, so I don't want to say benefit again in the next sentence. But benefit means things that are helpful. So I will prove how helpful the TV can be when good choices are made, because that's what wisely means, okay? Because I have wisely, I don't want to say this word again, so I'm going to say when good choices are made, because that's what it means to be wise, to make good choices. Okay, so that introduces this. Now I'm going to introduce the purple one. And the transition to that one, I'm going to say next. Okay, I will. You can see that I'm using will because that means I am about to do it, but I haven't done it yet. I will explain... Remember, explain is to help you understand how the TV can be harmful. Whoops. Can be harmful. Harmful means to hurt someone, and that is a problem. Can be harmful to kids. if it is not used wisely, if it is not used wisely. So I am really emphasizing in every sentence this if, right? If, when, I'm not saying how helpful the TV can be, period. I'm saying when good choices are made, if it is done wisely, if it is not done wisely, then it can be harmful. And then my last paragraph, which will be this one, my last detail, I'm going to say, finally, I, let me make sure you can see, okay, I will give, now here's kind of a fancy word, recommendations. Recommendations means I recommend. That means I will give you my opinion about what a good choice is or what a good choice will be for the TV. I will give recommendations. Oops, I meant to be using orange. Pretend this is all in orange. I will give recommendations about how to make good choices and I could put a period here okay so I'm saying if it is done wisely that means make good choices can be when good choices are made so 
So I'm really making a big point here about this part, right? Good choices need to be made. Now I'm going to add to this sentence, but this is not necessary. I'm going to say good choices that will I'm going to write it and then I will explain it. Eliminate the problems and increase the benefits. Okay, so it's going to do two things. Eliminate the problems and increase the benefits. Well, what do I mean by that? Eliminate means get rid of, and increase means make more. So when you think about my four square, these are my good choices. And I'm saying, if you make these good choices, you will get this more and this less. You'll get more of this, this will be gone. That means eliminate these problems, they go away, they're all gone, and increase the benefits, make these more. You can do that if you make good choices. So that this is the main point that I'm making. This is what my, I'm saying, okay, keep reading because this is what I'm gonna talk about in my paper, okay? I'll have a paragraph about this green sentence. Those are the benefits. A paragraph about the problems. If you don't follow my recommendations, if you don't make good choices, if you don't um, do watch TV wisely and then a paragraph about the orange sentence which is I'll tell you what those good choices can be all right so I'm ready to cross this out so what I want you to see in my introduction paragraph again is we have our one sentence that we always do which is our main idea but then, do you see how I did one sentence to introduce this? And I'll say, this, this says I'm going to have a paragraph about this. And then this purple one, I introduce this. And it says, keep reading, I will have a paragraph about this. And then this orange one, keep reading, and I will have a paragraph all about what those good choices are. So it is introducing or letting the reader know what they will learn about if they keep reading the rest of my paper. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here to this square, come down here and make an X to begin with. Comma. Okay. I'm going to use my subject, watching TV. Um, I've already said beneficial and I've said benefits two times. I've said beneficial one time and benefits two times. So the main benefit I wanna talk about is learning. So I'm just gonna get right to all of the things you can learn about. Um, so, and, I, and a great word to use with benefits is the word opportunity. Opportunity is kind of a fancy word. It means that you have the chance to do something really great. Um, like the opportunity to go to school is really great for kids. There are some kids in the world who do not have the opportunity to go to school because of maybe there is no school or maybe the family does not have enough money or maybe the kids need to stay home and um, work to help the family. So opportunity is um, when we have the chance to do something really great, like uh, we have the opportunity to go on a trip to Japan that's a great chance to learn things about Japan. So that's a, it's a good positive word. So to begin with, I'm gonna say watching TV 
is a great opportunity. That's a pretty powerful word. Okay, but if you're going to say this, you need to say for what? What is it a great opportunity for? I'm going to say it is a great opportunity for kids to learn. Here I come. Here I am coming to the main idea of this paragraph. Okay, opportunity is another word for um, something that will have benefits. Okay, if, if we have an opportunity to do something that is beneficial, that will be good for us. So this word is is my way of saying um, this is a this is a good thing. Watching TV is a good thing. It's beneficial. And my reason is for kids to learn about I'm having trouble here about. things in the world, comma, and in life, comma, that go beyond the walls of the house. This expression of to go beyond the walls of the house, we use this a lot um, in English where we say, you know, if you are inside your house, this is one wall and this is the other wall, you have four walls. And so if you are only inside the walls of your house, then you don't get to see what's happening outside your house or in the rest of the world or in a different city or a different country or a different place. But TV can be like a, a window into another part of the world that you can't go visit yourself in person. And by things that we can learn might be about the world, like animals and places and people, culture, but also in life, this is, remember I said that we could talk about the choices that characters make, how they solve their problems, how they treat other people, if they are a kind person or mean, or if they are lazy or if they never give up, and how talking about that with our family, it can improve our family relationships, but it can also help us become a better person who can make better choices because we learn from what happens when some of those characters don't make good choices and we think oh we don't want to do that we want to do something different so if we see relatable characters that have problems that we can relate to and think oh I, I totally know what they're going through I have that same problem then we're learning about things in life especially when we then have discussion or conversation with our family about them. Okay, so I've kind of introduced this paragraph here, and now I'm going to give the specific things. And these are my specific examples. And so I'm going to start by saying, for example. For example, comma. All right, so what's the first one? Nature and animals. Okay, so kids can learn new things about nature. Such as where and how animals live. Such as is another way to say, for example, where animals live and how animals live. 
where and how are two different questions. They give different pieces of information about animals. Where would tell us about the animal's habitat. We saw that word in one of the letters. That's where they live. And how they live would be about their adaptations. What do the animals do in order to be able to live in that place and not die? How do they get food? How do they make sure that no other animal comes and eats them? Okay, they can also learn about, so that's number two. Next one is places and people culture, okay? So I'm gonna say they, which is a pronoun, so I need to know who they are, and that would be kids. So they can also learn about different places About is the preposition we use after learn. So we say learn what? Learn about. Learn about different places and cultures around the world. Culture is talking about what, how people live. What life is like for them where they live. Around the world. Cultures around the world. I'm going to add, let's see, they can learn about different places and cultures around the world. And I'm going to put a comma and add just a little bit more about that. And how people live and I'm going to make a list of three things here. Live, comma, dress, comma, and eat in those places. That actually helps explain the meaning of culture because culture means how people live, dress, and eat in the place that they live. Okay, so that's this one. Number four. This one's gonna take me a few sentences to explain. But I'm gonna have another transition. Now, notice the transitions I have so far in here. As I have, for example, for my first, my first example, I use this. My next example, I use also. Also does not need to be at the very beginning of the sentence. We can also put it right here. For my last example, I am going to say last. This is my last example. Okay, the characters in TV shows have problems to deal with and decisions to make just like in real life. Okay, so they have problems to deal with. and decisions to make comma just like in real life now I need to explain that a little bit so I'm going to say when the kids and parents watch the show together and then talk about those decisions and problems. It can help the children learn the difference between good and bad choices. All right, that's a lot to say. Let's see. When the kids and parents watch the show together. You remember that when is a purple word. 
So I'm going to follow this with a subject and a verb, and at the end of the clause, I will use a comma. So when, and here comes my subject, which I'm going to keep writing in green because this is my green paragraph. When the kids and parents And then comes my, that's my subject. And what are they doing? Watch. That's my verb. Watch together. And that's the end. So there's my comma. Now, I'm not actually getting to my independent clause yet because I'm going to stick another, another, um, I'm going to stick kind of part two to this here. So I'm going to say, and then talk about those. Talk about those decisions and problems. So actually from here to here is my dependent clause because for the who's talking about those decisions and problems, it's still the kids and parents. So this is my subject here, the kids and the parents. And what are they doing? They're watching the show together and they're talking about the show together. Okay, so they're watching and they're talking. And this is what they're talking about. Now I'm going to start my independent clause here, and I'm going to say it can help the children. So my my actually the subject of my main sentence is just this word it, and it is referring to the process, this whole thing of watching together and then talking together. So when when they do that, if you do this, okay, this that's what it is. It can help the children learn the difference between good and bad choices. They can say that character made a good choice, that character made a bad choice. And usually we want to be like the characters that make good choices and we don't like to be like the characters who make bad choices. But there's something else that doing this so this piece right here, this is the key part. When, when the kids and parents watch the TV together and then talk about those decisions and problems right here that the characters make, it can do a couple things. One, this is one thing it can do. It can help the children learn the difference between good and bad choices, but it can also so here's the second, second benefit. This is one benefit to this. Here's the other benefit to this. It can also improve their family relationships. Let me finish that thought in just a minute. I'm going to just go ahead and say here, it can also, there's a transition, improve, that means make better, their family relationships. Relationship is how do people get along? Do they get along well or do they not get along well? In a good relationship, people feel loved and happy and smile. In a bad relationship, they're fighting and unhappy. So we want family relationships to be improved, to be good. Well, this sounds like a good reason 
but how do we do that? How, why can we say that? What is our evidence? What is our fact? Or what, what can we do to make this a really strong reason? So we're going to say, by providing, providing means, well, let me finish this. By providing an opportunity. Remember that word, opportunity. We often say this together, providing an opportunity. To provide is to give something to someone, right? Like the school can provide you with lunch. The school can provide you with books. Maybe the school does not provide you with a pencil box or with pencils. Maybe you need to provide the pencils for yourself. So provide is to give you something. Opportunity, remember, is a great chance to do something really special that will be good for you. So provide an opportunity for what? Remember, we have opportunity, we're going to say for, for what? For the family, to have a discussion, to have conversation, to talk, to have a discussion about what? About the characters, about the shows, about the decisions and the problems. I'm just going to say about interesting and meaningful things. Meaningful means they matter to us. They're not boring. Have you ever listened to someone talking and you think to yourself, oh, I'm so tired of listening to this. How does this what does this matter to me? Why do I need to hear this? This does not have any meaning for me. Meaningful is when you're listening to something that you want to keep listening. You want to keep hearing about it because it, you're, it makes you excited. It makes you interested. It makes you think, wow, this is really helpful. I find this interesting. I can use this in my own life. Then it has meaning for you. So this is kind of a long sentence, but let's look at it. So if we do this, kids and parents watch the TV together and then they talk about the decisions, the choices, and the problems that the characters have, the problems they have, and then how, what did they do to solve the problem? Did they make good choices or bad choices when they tried to solve their problems? And when the parents and the kids talk about that, they can learn the difference between good and bad choices, but also just by having this discussion, just by having the opportunity to talk to each other about things that are interesting and meaningful can improve the family relationship. So my sentence is it, which is this, doing this, can also improve or make better, improve what? Their family relationship. How? by providing an opportunity. An opportunity for what? For the family to have, have what? A discussion. A discussion about what? About interesting and meaningful things. So there are a lot of phrases in that sentence that keep answering questions, okay? So it is this, can improve, improve what? Their family relationship. This answers the question, how? by providing an opportunity. An opportunity for what? For the family to have, to have what? A discussion about what? Interesting and meaningful things. So this paragraph is all about the benefits. Okay, so we really explained our reason. We gave three examples. When we talked about our examples, we made a good argument. We were persuasive. We used some facts that are hard to disagree with. We helped the reader look at this whole situation of TV and children 
in a completely new me in a completely new way. Maybe they hadn't thought about any of these things. And hopefully now, after listening to our examples, to our our opinion and our evidence and our reason, okay, maybe now they will agree with us. This paragraph all by itself could be an opinion paragraph about why we could just go with this red sentence and then this and be done. Okay? It it we don't have to um, do the this part here where we talk about the problems and the solutions. We could leave this out. So do you remember I said I would come back and look at the directions and the direction said no more than two paragraphs? If we want to make this fit for this assignment, we could actually stop right here. We could just explain the benefits. We could have our main idea here and then this paragraph and then be done. So this would be a good opinion paragraph. If we want to make a really good persuasive essay, then we need to keep going. So, but I think to keep going, I am going to just show you what I have already written. And we can check it sentence by sentence. So, let's see. I'm going to move this up here. And I'm going to bring this in. This has been all typed up. All right, we are going to move over to the purple paragraph. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, good. All right, well, let's take a look at it one sentence at a time. So here, you'll notice that I changed the... Um, transition to however. However was a word we learned about when we were doing compare and contrast. And when we were doing compare and contrast, we said, if we have things that are different, if we're using contrast, okay, so this was, let me choose this. If we're going to do contrast, and we're going to show how two things are different, then maybe we explain about one thing here, and now we want to explain about something that is different. We could put however here as a transition to this. So in this case, we have the benefits. Okay, this one would be make good choices with the TV, have benefits. This one would be make bad choices and have problems. So those things are different. So in a way, we are comparing and contrasting what would happen if we make good choices and if we make bad choices, right? If we use the TV wisely, if we do not use the TV wisely. So we're going, so that's why we're gonna use one of those words from the contrast list of signal words. So I'm going to use however. So I'm switching from watching TV is great to watching TV can cause problems if, and I want you to see that word if, because that is a really important word in this whole paper. In fact, it's probably the most important word in this whole paper because it means my main idea here that watching TV is beneficial is great. That's only true if if, if, if it is done wisely. So this part about making good choices, that's the most important part of my opinion. My whole opinion depends on this. That's why I explain, if you do it wisely, you get the benefits, but only if you do it wisely. If you don't, you get the problems, okay? So then I say, well, here's how you do it wisely. These are what the good choices are. So you do this and you'll get this. You don't do this and you'll get that. So one of the reasons I'm including this paragraph is because I'm trying to persuade someone who doesn't agree with me to change their mind. 
And the person who doesn't agree with me is the person who thinks about all of these problems. They have not come up with a solution to these problems, so I will come up with a solution for them. So my sentence for this paragraph is problems, and I need to connect it to my main idea, which is about watching TV. So I say watching TV can cause problems for kids if poor choices are made. Check. Go to my next sentence. Okay, so here I have the less exercise, gain weight, less fit. And I say, for example, if someone, see my word if, so this is a complex sentence, I'm going to have to put a comma at the end of this group of words. If someone spends too much time watching TV, comma, they will have less time to exercise and be active. Okay, that's check. This could cause them to gain weight and be less fit. That's kind of a cause and effect sentence. Let me make sure I got this on here. Okay, I see everything, okay. Let me say that again, because I think it was off my page. For example, if someone spends too much time watching TV, they will have less time to exercise and be active. This could cause them to gain weight and be less fit. This is cause and effect. I have the word cause right here. And a lot of times when we use the purple word if, we are talking about cause and effect. Okay, we have two things with cause and effect. We have two things. We have the cause, that's number one and then we have the effect. That's number two. And we're saying, if you do this, then this will happen. So if this is too much TV, then it will cause you to be fat and to be less fit, okay, not be healthy. So this is the cause, this is the effect. This happens first, this happens second. And then I'm going to move to my next one, violence and bad influence. I have two sentences for this one. I said also, comma, so I have a transition. I want to show these three things are very different. And because these three things are very different, I really need to have a transition between each one. Right, for example, next, last, something like that. For example, also, last. So you can see I have for example, also, and then I'm going to have last. Okay, if, again I have if. If is very important, right, in this, in this paper because it all depends on good choices. If someone chooses, that's from the word choice, to watch shows that contain or have, this means have, violence, okay, when people hurt each other, this could, there's my comma, because that's the end of my clause, if someone, subject, verb, someone chooses to watch shows that contain violence, comma, this, here comes the effect, this could be a bad influence on the child. So the choice to watch a bad show is the cause, the effect could be gain weight, or the effect could be a bad influence. So this is a bad influence, that, sorry, this is an effect. So the cause would be don't use it wisely, choose bad shows. The effect would be gain weight, bad influence. Okay, well what is a bad influence, or how is it a bad influence, or what do we mean by that? And then I have a sentence that explains it. Now, if you remember, I used the word desensitize before. Desensitize means you see it so many times that it does not affect you very much anymore. If you keep seeing on a video game someone get killed over and over and over and over and over again, the next time they get killed, you're not going to be very upset about it. You're going to be like, oh yeah, that happens all the time, no big deal. 
So it says it could desensitize the child to violence so that violence no longer seems shocking or bad. This part here, when I said so that violence no longer seems shocking or bad, that part of the sentence is explaining what desensitize to violence means. I explained this in the sentence. It means violence no longer seems shocking or bad. And that was the bad influence. That would not be a good thing. Okay, last we move on to this mindless, no critical thinking skills. Can you see that on there? Okay. So again, I have if. I began each one of these with if, right? It was, for example, if, if, also if, last if. I said here, if the TV show is just entertaining. Entertaining means it just makes you laugh, you find it interesting, but you kind of stop thinking about everything. You're just enjoying the action, um, the adventure, the, um, the music. You're just enjoying it. And doesn't require the viewer to do any thinking this can be described as mindless time. So here between this comma and this comma, I am explaining what does it mean if the show is just entertaining. So what it means is it doesn't require the viewer. Viewer is the person who is viewing the show. View means looking at or watching. So the viewer is the person who is watching the TV. If it doesn't require, that means if the person watching the TV does not need to do any thinking, then they're just being entertained. And we can the word we can use for this is mindless. Mindless means not having to do any thinking. Too much of this will not help the child to develop critical thinking skills, right? We always tell kids to read because we want kids to be thinking, thinking about things. If we're just watching people on a TV screen and we're not doing any thinking about it, then we are not developing or getting better at having critical thinking skills. Everything I am talking about today, everything that we put on a Foursquare is an example of our practicing and developing critical thinking skills. Okay, so I can check that one off. Now I'm gonna go and cross off this list and I'm gonna go over here to my orange square. Let's see how I can get this all on the same. Let's see here. I don't know if I can get that all on. Maybe I might have to lift up the paper. Okay, so also I use a different transition word. I did not use also. I used nevertheless. Nevertheless is a transition and it means, okay, even though I said all of this, I'm still going to say this. Okay, don't worry. It means don't worry about any of this because I've got something else to say that will fix that. Okay, so here comes my solution, make good choices. So I say, my subject is, I turn make good choices into a noun by turning the verb make into making, M-A-K-I-N-G, and then it becomes the gerund form, which I can use as a noun. Making good choices becomes a gerund phrase that can be the subject of my sentence. Making good choices can decrease, that means have a lower number, make less, the problems and increase the benefits. Okay, so what that means is if you make these good choices, your benefits will get bigger and your problems will get smaller. Okay, this will be more and this will be less. Increase means go up, bigger number, 
and decrease means go down. So I'm gonna go check. Now this one says, choose good shows that have a positive influence. That means they are going to make you a better person. So I said, the first important choice is to choose good shows. For example, pick shows that have clean language, comma, positive role models, comma, and very little violence, period. So I have a list of three things. Clean language, we, that means no bad words. Positive role models, that means there are characters in there that are acting in a way that are setting a good example for you so that you can say, I want to be like that person because they are making good choices and very little violence. So you don't have a lot of people getting hurt and killed. Additionally, there's an, there's, remember, with each of these three examples, I want to have a transition from one to the next. So additionally is a transition word I can use. We often put in addition for the purple paragraph, you can take addition and add A-L-L-Y and you have additionally. It means in addition. Additionally, comma, think about which shows have characters in them who the children can relate to, comma, and whose decisions, words, and actions can provide a good topic for the family discussion. Okay, so this sentence is a command. The subject that goes with this verb is you. If a sentence begins, so we're gonna skip the transition. If the sentence begins with a verb, then it is a sentence called a command. So let me just show you what I mean. If I say, sit down, well, every sentence needs to have a subject. But here I start with the verb, who's the subject? Well, the only time I'm going to say sit down is if I'm talking to someone. And the person I'm talking to is you. I don't say to that person, you sit down. I just look at that person with my eyes. They know that I'm talking to them. They know who I'm talking to. And I'm saying sit down. And they know, that person knows, that I am talking to, it's like I am talking to you. Sit down. Yes, you. You are the person I'm talking to. You are the person that I want to sit down. So when we start with a verb, our subject is, we say it's implied. That means I don't have to write it down because you know what I'm talking about. You can figure it out. If I look at you and say, sit down, that does not mean I want little Joe on the other side of the room to sit down. I want you to sit down because I am talking to you. And that kind of sentence is called a command. It's a special kind of sentence, and the subject is always you, implied, and it's when we start with a verb, and it means we are talking to someone. If we do it in writing, then the person we're talking to is the person who's reading it. So where are we here? So this means you can think about which shows have characters in them, who, now we're going to talk about what characters are we looking for. We're looking for characters who the children can relate to. Remember that word we had here, relatable. Okay, something about the character that we say, hey, I totally understand that character there is something about their life that is just like my life. And whose decisions, words, and actions, that means the decisions that the character makes. The character is gonna make choices, it's gonna say things, and it's going to do things. So words are the things that the character says, actions are the things that the character does, and decisions are the choices that the character makes. And when we look at those, they provide a good topic. That means something we can talk about with our family in a discussion. So 
So that word discussion is what we are going to talk about together. Now, you'll notice here, I say, in other words. In other words is a really helpful transition when we just said a sentence that we kind of want to say again using different words. Okay, so here, I'm going to say kind of again, consider, which means think about, consider which shows can be entertaining as well as, that means also, an opportunity for thinking. Remember, an opportunity is a good thing. It's a benefit. It means we will have the chance to do something, something that will be good for us, and thinking is good for us. So consider which shows can be entertaining, that means they're fun to watch, but also, as well as, an opportunity for thinking. Okay, so that's check, check. And then comes the last one, make a schedule. Once the shows have been agreed upon by the family, okay, so as soon as the family has decided which are the shows that are good to watch and everyone agrees, planning a schedule, so this is a gerund phrase, we turn the word plan, make a schedule or plan a schedule, we turn this into planning. Planning a schedule for the TV is a great idea. By having a schedule, the TV will be on for less time. And I should not have that and this. I should have just one. The TV will be on for less time. And let's go with that. And that will allow the children to have more time for exercise and being active. So here we've given an argument for the person's pro the person who had a problem about TV causing someone to have less exercise, here we've said, there's the solution, plan a schedule. By having a schedule, the TV will be on for less time, and that will allow the children to have more time for exercise and being active. And then we have our conclusion. As you can see, watching TV has many benefits for children as long as good choices are made about what and when to watch. Okay, so this was a long and pretty advanced five paragraph persuasive persuasive essay. One thing I wanted to introduce you to in this in this one is how in the introductory paragraph we had our main idea sentence which we always put in the be in the middle of the four square and then we had a sentence to introduce the green that what will be the kind of the three details that what this one will be about what this will be about what this will be about and then we transitioned to all about the benefits you know what would happen if we use TV wisely what will, what will happen if we do not use TV wisely and how to make those good choices that will let us have this, but not this. Okay, so that is our example of persuasive writing that we used for here. But if you remember, when we look at the directions, it said no longer than two paragraphs. So my recommendation for this particular assignment would be that we only have the green paragraph. Okay, so this sentence and then explain this. Although to really explain the part about if it is done wisely, we would need to include this. So maybe the green and the orange paragraphs. And it said two paragraphs is okay. So you could put the red sentence at the beginning of this, use the green paragraph, use the orange paragraph, and be done. But it is still a um, pretty advanced paragraph uh, or essay. So as we close, we're just going to remember that 
when we are doing persuasive writing, doo -doo 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 -doo, here's my persuasive writing. When we are doing persuasive writing, we are giving our opinion, but we are trying to, um, we know that our reader might not agree with us. So we are going to give an argument about our reasons so that our reader will change his mind. Okay, we want our reader, we're gonna give our reasons. We're gonna explain our reasons because we want to get our reader to, we want to persuade them to change their mind. And whether or not we can do that depends on if we support our opinion with evidence. And the evidence gives our reasons And we support our reasons with examples and with data. And data are facts. When we can support our opinion with facts, it will be really hard for someone to argue with us or disagree with us. And we, we will have a better chance of being persuasive and getting them to change their mind. Okay, that's it for today.